Hello students, in the previous video, we have talked about the major constituents of seawater. So today in this video, we shall be discussing about one of the important physical properties of ocean water that is the temperature. But before that, let's look at the four major physical properties of ocean water. Okay, so these four major properties are color, odor, temperature and density. So, in this video, we shall be restricting ourselves to the temperature as an important physical property of seawater. Okay. So, the importance of temperature in seawater can be understood from the fact that ocean is a great storehouse of energy. That energy is in the form of heat. Why? Because the specific heat of water is very high. Further, this temperature in ocean water plays a major role in influencing the global radiation budget of the earth as well as the heat budget. The thermal concentration of oceans, it influences the planetary wind belts and the ocean currents. Further, the weather and climate of places close to coastal areas or in coastal areas are also regulated by this temperature in the form of sea breeze and land breeze. We have discussed about this in one of my videos on winds. This temperature in the ocean water also makes the hydrological cycle functional. Why? Because the sea temperature, it determines the evaporation as well as the precipitation at a place. Higher the temperatures, higher would be the evaporation from the ocean surface. Also, it is important to mention here that the salinity as well as the density of ocean water at any place is also closely related to the sea temperature. So, now let us have a look at the daily range of temperature in the ocean water. What is a range? Generally, we say range is the difference of the maximum and the minimum temperature of a place. Right. So, if we look at the ocean water, this range is close to 1 degree Celsius. Here, the maximum as well as the minimum temperature of ocean water is recorded at 2 p.m. and 5 a.m. respectively. At high latitudes, the daily range is even lesser at some places being close to 0.3 degree Celsius. There are various factors that control this daily range of temperature. The first among this being the condition of the sky that means if the sky is clear we will have more of heating and accordingly more of cooling that changes your range the second condition is the stability of air calm conditions would have lesser of winds and unstable atmosphere would have more of windy conditions the third one in this is the stratification of sea water as we all know the high density of sea water below the surface causes very little mixing and thus transfer of heat through conduction. So, the range would be very low. After daily range of temperature, let us have a look at the annual range of temperature. This annual range is more exhibited in the northern hemisphere due to greater land masses. So, here the maximum temperature is recorded in August and the minimum in the month of February. So, the variation in insulation at different places would yield different range. Why? The insulation is the amount of solar radiation that is incident at a place. Besides, the nature of the sea as well as the prevailing winds at those times would also contribute to the annual range in temperature. The next factor is the location of the sea. What that means is enclosed seas that will have a higher range of temperature compared to the open seas and the last factor in this is the size of the ocean why the larger the area of the sea lesser would be the variation in the ranges for example in atlantic ocean the range is much higher annually compared to pacific ocean which is huge now let's have a look at the distribution of temperature the first factor in this is the latitudes as we all know, the solar insulation decreases from equators to the poles due to the sun rays being more slanting as we move towards the poles. So, what happens is the temperature that decreases as we move from equators towards the poles. It has been observed that between 40 degree north and 40 degree south latitudes, the temperature of seawater is much much lower than the air temperature of that place. 
However, between 40 degree latitudes and poles, it has been observed that the temperature of sea water is greater than the temperature of air at that place. Now let's have a look at the second factor which is the unequal distribution of land and water in both the hemispheres. As we all know, in northern hemisphere, we have more of land compared to the southern hemisphere. So, in northern hemisphere, we have higher temperature of waters compared to same latitudes in southern hemisphere due to larger contact with the extent of land in northern hemisphere compared to the southern hemisphere. Further, the isotherms that means imaginary lines joining places of equal temperature are very irregular in northern hemisphere but they are quite regular in the southern hemisphere. Also, it is important to note that the temperature in enclosed seas in the northern hemispheres, they have higher temperatures. Why? Because they are surrounded by land on all the sides. The next factor in this is the nature of land and water. So, what has been observed is if the insulation that is received by both land and water is same, it has been seen that the sunlight it penetrates only up to 3 meters on land but several meters in water. This implies that the insulation it heats up a larger volume of water as compared to land. This implies that the temperature of land is much higher than the temperature of water. Further, the heat that is received in ocean water is redistributed since there the water is in a constant state of flux as it keeps moving from one place to another. However, that doesn't happen to such an extent on land. It has been seen that heat uh, is redistributed in the ocean water due to the mobile nature of water. However, that does not happen on land. Further, there is more of evaporation from the surface of water compared to the surface of land. This implies that more heat is spent in the process of evaporation. So, as I mentioned earlier also, water has a very high specific heat. So, the specific heat of water is much greater than the specific heat of land. This implies that more amount of heat is used up to heat equal quantity of water. It has been seen that heat required to raise uh, a volume of one food cube of water is twice that of the equal volume of land. Also, if we look at the albedo, that means the ratio of reflected solar energy compared to the incident solar energy, that is also much higher for water compared to land. But we should not forget that the clouds present in the sky, they absorb the outgoing terrestrial radiations and re-radiate it back to the earth. And the cooling over ocean waters is comparatively slow compared to land. The next factor in this is the prevailing winds. Why prevailing winds? Offshore winds that blow from land towards the oceans, what they do is they will drive the warm surface water away from the land to the oceans, thus resulting in an upwelling of the colder waters from below. Thus, the replacement of the upper warm water by the lower colder water, it results in the longitudinal variations in temperature. Further, the onshore winds, they pile up warm water near the coast and thus increase the temperature. For example, the trade winds cause low temperature in tropics at the eastern margin of oceans or the western margin of continents since they blow from the land to oceans. Whereas these trade winds, they raise the temperature in the western margins or eastern coastal areas of continents because of their onshore position. The next in this category is the ocean currents. The ocean currents play an important role because the surface temperature is determined by whether the current is warm or cold. The warm currents, they will increase the temperature of the ocean water while the colder currents would reduce or lower the temperature. Further, these warm currents, they raise temperature more than northern hemisphere compared to the southern hemisphere. For example, if we look at the warm current flowing from Gulf Stream to North America through Europe or the Kurosho current that moves warm water away from Asia, but it raises the temperature in Alaska. Similarly, if we look at the cold Kuril currents in Siberia, 
or the Labrador currents in the northeast coast of North America. Besides these, the minor factors that affect the distribution of temperature are the presence of submarine ridges, local weather conditions such as storm, cyclones, fog, presence of clouds or the evaporation rate. Besides that, the location and the shape of sea is also important. That means whether the sea is enclosed or it is open sea. After this, let's look at the horizontal distribution of temperature. So, as I told you earlier also, what are isotherms? They are imaginary lines joining places of equal temperatures on a map which is reduced to sea level. On an average, the temperature of surface sea water is about 26.7 degrees Celsius. Temperature gradually decreases from equators to poles as I have mentioned earlier also. Rate of decrease of temperature with increasing latitudes is about 0.5 degree Fahrenheit per latitude. Further, it has been seen that oceans and northern hemisphere they record higher temperatures compared to southern hemisphere due to the presence of land. What is interesting is that the highest temperature is not recorded at the equator, rather a bit towards north of it. Average annual temperature of all oceans is about 17.2 degrees Celsius. If you look in terms of hemisphere, the average annual temperature for northern hemisphere is 19.4 degrees Celsius and for southern hemisphere is 16.1 degree Celsius. This variation in temperature is due to unequal distribution of land and water. Generally, the temperature of surface ocean water is higher than that of air temperature because the ocean, it gives off heat. This is one of the reasons why the difference between the surface sea water and the air temperature leads to the formation of fog over the surface of oceans. This is generally common in high altitudes and it has been seen that when warm air passes over a colder sea surface having temperature below the dew point, then the air is cooled from below and the sea fog occurs. Now let's have a look at the vertical distribution of temperature. The maximum temperature is always observed at the surface and then it starts decreasing as we go downwards. It has been seen that solar rays they generally penetrate up to 200 meter depth and they seldom go beyond 200 meters. Further as I said that the temperature decreases with depth but this rate of decrease of temperature with depth is not uniform. So based on the penetration of light the ocean is divided into two zones photic zone that means till where the sunlight reaches and it is about 200 meter depth and beyond that where the sunlight cannot penetrate that is known as the aphotic zone. So, for the vertical distribution, if we look at this figure that denotes the thermal structure of ocean water, we have three major layers, the upper layer, the lower layer and the thermocline. So, if we look at the upper layer, the thickness of this layer is about 500 meters. The average temperature in this zone is about 20 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius and here the lighter ocean water moves over the heavier water mass. The lower layer, it extends from beyond 1000 meters to the bottom of ocean bed. This layer is very cold and comprises of dense water mass. What is interesting is the third layer which is thermocline layer and it is a transitional zone of rapid change of temperature with increasing depth. So it falls between the upper layer and the lower layer and it extends between 300 meters to 1000 meters. So here what happens is the temperature that decreases rapidly. So here what happens is in this thermocline the temperature it decreases very rapidly with depth. So if you look at the seasonal thermocline it is about 40 meters and 100 meters while if you look at the diurnal thermocline that means thermocline formed on a daily basis then it is even less than 10 to 15 meters. So, students, in this video, we have talked about the horizontal and vertical distribution of temperature in ocean water and what are the factors that are responsible for or influence this variation in temperatures in ocean water. So, I hope you all have learned something from this and in the next video, we will be talking about the variation of density in ocean water. Thank you.